Hello and welcome to Web Development 101 with Alex Merced. On this show, we'll talk about all the basic concepts of web development in a way that anyone can understand, whether it's front-end web development, back-end web development, and full-stack web development. If you're new to web development, I recommend listening from episode one to understand all the concepts from beginning to end. You can also learn more about my own personal projects over there at alexmercedcoder.com. Thank you. Hey, everybody. This is Alex Merced, and you are listening to Web Development 101. And um, today we're going to be talking about cascading style sheets, CSS. What's that? Um, Now, a cascading style sheet, or CSS, was, as I've mentioned in the last couple episodes, it's where they separated out style from the design of the website. So you had HTML that kind of says, okay, here's the content, and then CSS says, this is what the content should look like. So you would create a separate document with, instead of a .html suffix, it would have a .css suffix. And the browser would then know this is a style sheet. And then you would include that in your HTML, refer to it in your HTML document with a link tag. Um, you could actually style and use CSS within your HTML document. You would just use a style tag. And then anything within the style tag would be treated as CSS, and then you can create your CSS. But again, the ways the problem with that is if you do it in your one HTML sheet, then it doesn't apply to the other HTML pages. So then you have to keep redoing it. So the idea is you have it as a separate document, so that way you can just keep including that CSS so that way you can keep using the same styles and you're saving yourself time from doing it over and over and over again. And with CSS, you can style anything. Um, you could style any tag. So any tag on your HTML page can get its own style. So you would do is you would just put the name of the tag and then in curly brackets, you would put all of these um, attributes or all these styles for how you're going to style your, your CSS which technically always takes the format of, okay, the name of the thing you're changing, so let's say color for text color, and then you would put a colon, and then you would put what value, so I'd be like color colon white for white text, and then a semicolon, uh, meaning I'm done with that particular thing, and I'm doing another one. And you can create really complex styles that are really cool. But you can't just, but you can go beyond just at change, saying what the, ta- the different tags in your website do. You can edit those classes and IDs. Okay, so basically, if you're talking about a class, so if you defined a class attribute in one of your HTML tags, then you would put like a period, then the name of the class. So if I called something paragraph, so class equals quotation mark paragraphs inside an HTML tag on my HTML page, I then on my CSS style, she would put period paragraph meaning it's a paragraph class, and then style that. And then anything with that paragraph class would then take on all the styling I specified. So that way I don't have to do it over and over and over again. I just style it once and you're done. But again, IDs, if I did ID equals, you know, quotation marks, special paragraph on an HTML tag, then I would do, on my my style sheet, I would do pound or hashtag the name of the idea, so hashtag special paragraph, and then do my style. And the reason being is, again, there are two different things, ideas you use generally for unique items, and then classes you use for styles you plan on using over and over and over and over again. And it gets even better. You can style multiple things at the same time. So if you have if you want, if you have a particular style you want to apply to three different things at the same time, you can just put, so I can be like P, comma, span, comma, div, so those three tags, and then do my style. So that's pretty cool. And also, now, a concept in HTML is that there's children and parent. Um, children and parent tags. Okay, It's all part of what's called the document object model, meaning there's sort of like a, a chain, a, a hierarchy of the different components and the reason why that's important is because, especially for CSS and JavaScript, when you're manipulating what's seen on the screen, you kind of need to know how everything relates to each other. So everything is sort of, you have to imagine like a, a tree. So if I were to create that body tag, the body tag, and then, then there's a div tag within the body tag, the div is the child of the body. Okay, and if I wanted all div tags that are children of a body tag, 
to be styled in a particular way, I would just type in body space div and then do my style. And then that particular style would apply to all div tags that are children of the body tag, which that probably wouldn't be the most useful style um, because it would just basically edit all your divs, but you can do that. And then there's also, you can, there's certain ones where you can edit certain states of the thing. So for example, hover. So if I only wanted a style to apply when your mouse cursor hovers over a particular thing, so let's say, you know, I put I put my mouse cursor over this particular paragraph and then I wanted to kind of like change colors so that way it looks like you highlighted it. I can do that. I can do, so I would just say, you know, maybe the class ID colon hover, which means whenever I hover anything, any HTML element with that particular ID or class, apply this new style. And then you'll have that sort of cool animation effect, often very much used for like links in a menu. So that way it looks like you highlight it and, you know, you can change and links have their own extra. So like if you click, you can change when it's visited. So you have a lot of power to style um, stuff. And then in recent in CSS3, the sort of the newest version of CSS, there's all these new sort of animation styles. So you can kind of actually animate things from the CSS, create shapes. You can actually draw shapes using CSS and create SVGs and vectors. Um, Actually, one really good tool for learning a lot of those more advanced and new CSS uh, attributes I found is an app called SoloLearn. Now, SoloLearn is a mobile app, and it has, I think it was 12 or 13 uh, certificate courses. Really what they are, they're just the basics of different programming languages. And I did all 13 of them. It was really, really useful to just kind of learn the basic syntax and a little bit of history and a little bit of all these 13 languages, uh, which included like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, Java, um, C Sharp, C, C++, um, PHP, and a few others. So that was very, very, very useful. Um, and then that'll give you sort of a flavor for a lot of the other stuff you can do with CSS. But then they took it even further. So the thing is that it's just standard CSS, your browser renders. So your browser, this is a client-side thing, front-end. But people wanted to make it easier, and people wanted to make making a style sheet and add more programming elements. So imagine that the style that happens in certain situations changes depending on a situation. So it's like an if statement where, okay, if this is true, then style it this way. If that is true, then style it this way. And what if there's certain chunks of styling? So, so basically, like for example, if two styles are like 75% the same, you'd still have to make two styles in CSS. Um, I mean, you you don't have to technically. In the CSS, technically, you can make you can make multiple classes, and then an HTML tag can have multiple classes. So you can create one tag, one CSS class that it has more to do with like, is it a block and what size is it? So more formatting type stuff. And then another one that's specific to colors. And then you can put both classes. So if this is like the col a color class and a style class, that could be like class equals apostrophe, block, you know, paragraph, space, color. And then that would actually apply both classes to that element. And that's actually what a lot of um, modern CSS frameworks do. So the most popular one being Bootstrap 4. Um, what Bootstrap is, so you basically would, you could download the CSS style sheet, import it into your project, and you already have all these sort of styling features, which are really useful for making your website um, responsive to mobile. The second, I think, biggest one is Materialize. Um, materialize uh, based on sort of the material sort of UI framework, I think that was developed by Google, uh, the material framework was developed by Google, Materialize is an implementation of that. Um, but those are sort of the two big ones. There's a bunch of other ones, but what they do is they give you all these styles out of the gate. So instead of you having to design all these basic styles to do a lot of the things that kind of are always done, far as making sure that your website resizes on mobile, creating sort of a grid style layout, you can just throw in Bootstrap, throw in Materialize, throw in one of these other frameworks right in and you're good to go. Um, and different ones have different pros and cons to them. Some of them are a little bit more complicated, but have more features. Some of them are a little bit simpler, but you know, leave mean, but leave you to do more. 
But then another cool tool is SAS. Um, and what SAS is, is what I was trying to get at earlier, where it's basically more like programming. So instead of you creating a style sheet that the browser renders, you would create code, you'd create a SAS file, um, which is SCSS, and um, a SAS compiler would then take that file and compile it to CSS for your website. But then you can use a bunch of cool SAS tools that allow you to um, basically take a lot of work out. So for example, you can create little like identifiers and includes and, and little, and you can actually have math in your CSS style sheet. So you can be like, okay, um, get this variable and then make the color 10 points darker than, the, you know, they, you can create much more programmatic elements to your CSS style sheet to create some more complex things. And it's not hard to do. But then, what, but again, the browser doesn't recognize SAS. So basically, when you load up a website, they're not reading your SAS file. What's happening is that that SAS file is going to get compiled into CSS, which you can either do ahead of time and then just include the CSS file. Some server-side frameworks will compile it real time, but the idea is that's what SAS is. So SAS is basically a, a sort of a, a less, a, an extra cool way of styling. It, it has a lot of benefits. It's not hard to learn. Okay, I like, probably took like, I spent the day, watched some videos and, you know, was already able to benefit from being able to use SAS style sheets. And whenever you're practicing any kind of HTML, JavaScript, or a CSS, I highly recommend the website codepen.io. It's a really cool like sandbox where you can just kind of program stuff, see what it looks like. And you don't have to deal with like a lot of the, oh, I got to set up a web server, I got to go upload stuff. No, you just program it there and you can kind of see what it looks like right away. And you can play with things and get used to doing things. Um, it's very, very awesome in that regard. So I highly recommend checking out codepen.io. So, so far, all my recommendations have been that that Dash um, less course. Um, Solo Learn and it's 13 certification courses for, for different programming languages and using codepen.io to, to do a lot of this work and practice it and get kind of master it. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time when we talk about JavaScript. Have a great one. Ciao. And a quick summary. Again, CSS is for styling. And again, you can there are frameworks built on CSS that kind of do a lot of the work for you. And three, you can go even further with CSS by using SAS. So I'll see you guys next time.